In the previous few lessons, we've been concentrating on the setup of each one of your pages on your site. Things like the URLs, the browser titles, and the meta tags. What we're going to start concentrating on now is the content on your site. So before we actually look at adjusting the content to match some keywords that you want to be found for, we need to make sure that the HTML structure behind the pages is SEO friendly. So before we do that, what I've set up here is an HTML page that demonstrates some good markup for SEO. This is a fictional site for myself where I write about HTML and SEO. So let's have a quick look through here and see why this page has some good markup and how we could apply that to our RapidWeaver site. So to start with, I have a header area here with a site title, a slogan and my navigation. Next, I have the main content for the page. I have an H1 which describes the content. Then I have some subheadings that divide up each section of the main content. So for example, I have some information about lists. I have some information about block quotes and images. So you can see here I have a header for each section underneath the main heading for this page. This is good because it describes what the content will be in each area of the site and will allow us to add some keywords and describe the content to search engine bots. Underneath the main content I have a sidebar with some supporting content. This could be links to other pages on your site or it could be some links to other relevant websites. Finally, we have a footer with some additional information about the site or about our company. We have replicated the navigation so it's easy for users to be able to navigate through all the other pages on our site. And then we have the company name and the address. Now, as you can see, there is no styling on this page and I've done that on purpose simply because when we're looking at the HTML structure behind our page, we don't need to worry about the CSS. The CSS is obviously going to visually change how we look at the content. But when a search engine comes along and indexes your site, what it's really doing is looking at the HTML structure behind that. So although they are taking into consideration whether your site works well on different devices, when they're actually indexing and looking at all of your pages, what they're looking at is the raw HTML. And this is what you basically see here. So if you ever want to check whether your HTML structure is in good shape, disable the CSS on your site and have a look at how your page reads without those stylings applied. And in this example, I'd say it's pretty good. We have a site title and a slogan, so we can easily understand what this site is about. Then we have links to all of our pages. And then in the main content area, we have a heading that describes the content of this page. Then throughout all of the main content on the page, we have subheadings that divide it up nicely into separate blocks. So we can understand that this page is about good markup for SEO. Then we have some lists, then we have some quotes information, and then we have some information about images. Finally, we have a sidebar with some supporting content. And then we have some footer which rounds off the page and just gives you a little bit more information about who we are, where we are and stuff like that. So before we look at applying this to our Rapid Weaver built site, let's just have a look at the code behind this page so you can understand what we're doing here. So to do that, I'm going to be using the develop menu in Safari and specifically the web inspector. If you don't have this develop menu enabled in Safari, you can go to the preferences and under the advanced tab, you need to make sure that the show develop menu in menu bar is checked. You'll then have access to all of these developer tools. Okay, and under the elements tab here, we can inspect the code behind the page here. So we have the main body area and we have a header with our site title in an H1 tag. Then we have the slogan in an H2 and then we have the navigation for our site, which is a list of links. Next, we have the main content area which you can see here, I have a heading with an H1. Now previously you might have heard that you should only ever have one H1 tag on your page. This isn't necessarily the case. It's good practice to keep the H1 tags down to a minimum and only use them when they are actually relevant and make sense. So in this case, I would say that having a heading for this article or this blog post inside of an H1 does make sense. Then we have a section area with the main body of the post. Then we have added a header to each main content section inside of the post using H2 tags. Underneath that, if you need to divide the content up even further, like we have done here under the lists section, 
we have unordered lists and ordered lists. So then you should use an h3 tag. So you can see the logical order here is h1 is the title of the content, any subcontent sections have an h2, and anything below that has an h3 tag. If you need any other headings, such as here I've used example code, then you can put them inside of an h4. And this is more to perhaps just make something bold or stand out on the page. You're not going to see any SEO gains by putting content inside of an h4 tag. And then finally, as we scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see I have the sidebar here. And I have put the heading there inside of an h3 because this is just some supporting content for the page. It's not that important, but I still want the heading here to stand out. Then I have some text and some links. And in the footer, we obviously have, again, I've put the title inside of an h3 because I want it to stand out. But again, it's probably not going to be that important to the content on the page or that irrelevant to the content on the page. And we have a list of links and a V card with our company address in. Okay, so as I say, the HTML structure for this page is very logical. It's easy to read the content on here and understand what this page is all about. You can easily see each section of the content is divided by headings and we're describing the content for the page with our main title of the page inside the H1 tag here. So before we look at applying this to our site, I just want to have a look at some of the hidden attributes and additional pieces of code that you can use on your site to just describe the content to search engine bots uh, in, a, in a little bit of a better way. So to start with that, let's go up to the header area and have a look at the slogan. Now the text inside of here is describing my site as a whole, or it could describe the actual page that you're on. It's going to depend on how your site looks like. Um, but essentially what I'm saying here is that this site is about interesting articles that help you learn HTML and SEO. And one thing to note is that I've linked learn HTML and SEO inside of this H2 tag. And I wanted to point this out because what you'll often see is that people will put something like read my blog or learn more, for example, inside of the link text. That's not very descriptive and it's not telling the search engine bots when you click on this link, you're going to learn about HTML and SEO. You're, you're just telling the bots, read more or learn more or read my blog. That doesn't describe the content the, on the page that you're sending them to. So it's important to try and think about the text that you're using inside of your links. And here, what we're saying is when you click on this link, you can learn about HTML and SEO. And I'm sending them to my articles page. So this just helps the search engine bots build up a picture that the articles on your site are about learning HTML and SEO. And I've backed that up by using the title attribute and describing the link for users and search engine bots. And what I've said is that you can learn HTML and SEO by reading all of my articles. So this link, I would say, is a perfect example of the way that you should be writing your links across your entire site. You're saying learn HTML and SEO by clicking on this link and then you're describing it to users and search engine bots by saying, when you click on this link, you can really learn about HTML and SEO by reading all my articles. So this is the type of thing that we want to be doing when we're adding links to other pages on our site. And whilst we're talking about links, it's really important that you try and add a title attribute to all of the links where possible. Now this isn't always uh, completely under your control when you're using template-based site builders such as RapidWeaver, because some of the HTML output is controlled by the theme or the application itself. But as I say, where possible, you should try and add a title to describe the link. So you're telling search engine bots what type of content is going to be on this uh, link when you click on it. So for example, here you can see that I have added a title of articles, photos and tweets from Ben Council. However, the link text is home, which does make sense if you're looking at the site. You don't want the link text to be articles, photos and tweets from Ben Council. That doesn't really look very nice and it doesn't really make sense. So we can describe that with the title attribute and say, you know, when you do click on this link, that's what you're going to see. And I've done that in the same way for these other links. So you can find out more about me on the about page. And finally, the articles page, you can learn about HTML and SEO. So I really want to drill this in. All of these HTML attributes that we're going to be looking at 
are just ways of reinforcing the type of content that is going to be on these pages and describing to search engine bots what they should find on this page. And that's going to help them build up a picture of your site and all of your pages and your content and serve your pages when users put in relevant search terms. Okay, so let's just carry on and have a look at a couple of the other elements that I wanted to focus on here. If we go down to the images section and we inspect this image, you can see here that I've added an alt tag to the image. Now the alt tag describes what the actual image is or the content inside of that image. And this is important because search engine bots can't necessarily understand what content is inside that image. Now Google especially are getting a lot better at this. They have a lot of advanced algorithms for understanding what images are these days. However, the alt tag is still important because they can't know the specifics of that image. So adding the types of keyword terms that you want to be found for inside of the alt tag of your images is important still. And it's especially important when people are doing Google image searches. If you're adding relevant keywords and terms to the alt tags, it's going to allow Google to be able to match those up to the search terms more easily. And that's one way of driving more visitors to your site because uh, Google image search is big. If people are finding relevant images on your site, they'll probably go and visit your page. They might read through some of your content and perhaps you can get more visitors and build up a little bit more traffic to your site in that way as well. And as I say, the hidden uh, tags like the title and the alt also build up a picture for the search engine bots about the type of content that is on the page. Okay, so now that we've looked at some good HTML markup for SEO, let's go and have a look at our live site and see what it looks like compared to this example markup. So I'm gonna switch over to my rapidweaverseo.com site and I'm on the home page, and you can see I have the title, a slogan, the navigation is under here and we have the main content area here with some links. So as I mentioned before, the, the best way to see how your HTML structure is doing is to disable the styles on your site. And to do this, go to the develop menu and choose disable styles. That will then show your page without any CSS applied. And as I say, this is a great way to see how the markup is on your site and whether your content reads nicely. So here we can see we have our logo and we have the site title. Then we have the navigation links. So we've started off in a pretty similar way to the example content here. We've site title, slogan, links, pretty much the same here. Then we come to another copy of the logo, the site title and the slogan. So you may be wondering why this is. And essentially this is going to vary from theme to theme. Um, but what this theme offers is a, if I just show you these styles again, is a popover menu. And you can see that if I show these styles again and open up the menu, you'll see that we have another copy of the uh, logo here and then the site title and some links. But we also have the logo here and the site title. And that is why when we disable these styles, you'll see two copies of that. One of them is on the page inside the menu bar and the other one is actually inside of the popover menu there. So it's kind of unavoidable with this theme. We're going to have a little bit of duplication, but you're not gonna get penalized for that. And your site still reads fairly logically. Um, if you have a look at this, so we're basically saying here's the unbelievable coffee site, here's our links. And then here, okay, we do have some duplication with the title, but then we have the slogan. So it's not too bad considering that we don't have 100% control over all of the outputted HTML. Anyway, let's move on to the content area. Here we have the title of the page. We're just saying welcome at the moment, which we're gonna, which we're gonna look at improving on in another episode. But essentially this reads okay. We have the page title, then we have an image, and some text and then we have four links in a row here so this doesn't read so well it's not very descriptive it's just three links doesn't say much about the page there's no titles have been added so what might have been better is if we have individual headings for each one of these sections so for example the blog we could say 
read our coffee articles, perhaps have a description about what we're talking about in the articles area and then link off to it. And the same with the coffee, we could say where we source our coffee beans from and, and stuff like that and then have a link and the same for the last two. Because as I say, these four links, they don't really describe anything about our site. They're not helping search engine bots build up a picture of the type of content that we have available on our website. And then we have our sidebar here where we have the logo again and the uh, little bit of supporting text. We don't have any links or anything else. So again, we could perhaps improve on that, perhaps have a heading. Maybe we don't need the site logo in here again. Maybe having it three times on the page is a little bit overkill. So the sidebar could definitely be improved upon. And then finally, we have the footer area where we just have a copyright notice and an email link. So again, that could definitely be improved upon because we're not adding any relevant information to our website. We're not saying who we are. We're not saying where we are. We're not giving them the opening times. We're not linking off to some other pages, perhaps the most popular articles on our site, stuff like that. All, all those sorts of things we could definitely improve upon on the home page. And just to reiterate this, let's have a look at one of our other pages, perhaps the copy page. So obviously the header area is going to be the same and then we have the page title. And this page is actually a little bit better because we have a subheading where we are dividing our content up into sections. So we have our coffee, then we have a little bit of text, then a subheading, an image, another subheading, and then our sidebar and footer. So this page isn't actually too bad. And if we go and look at our example code, you'll see essentially it's the same thing. We have a heading, we have some text, and then we have the subheadings for each section of our content. And that's basically the same here. Page title or the page heading, and then a couple of subheadings to divide the main content up into. As I say, we're going to look at how we can actually match the keywords that we want to be found for into our page content, but we're just concentrating on the structure for now. And we'll just have a look at one other page, perhaps the cafe page. And again, the header is the same. Then we have a location. Uh, we actually have a map on here that doesn't work so well without the styling applied. We won't worry too much about that now. And then we have the cafe heading with some photos. And we could definitely improve upon this because, for example, with the map, we haven't actually added the address to the page. We just added the map and expected it to work and expected people to know where we are. We haven't actually marked up the address onto the page. So when a search engine bot comes to this page, they're not going to understand where your business actually is. Whereas a visitor might well do because they can see the map and understand the map. So again, with the HTML markup, we're helping the search engine bots understand the content on our page. And finally, just one last point. Again, we have a photo gallery here without the styling applied you can see that we just have the same title for each one of these photos. These could definitely be more relevant and they could be linking off to other pages on our site and we could perhaps if we do some brewing courses we could be saying sign up for one of our brewing courses under this photo or here we could be saying we could be describing something about our cafe we have outside seating you know all this relevant stuff about our business is just going to help not only visitors, but the search engine bots understand our content and build up a better picture of what our site is all about. So I think that just about does it for this lesson. In the next lesson, what we're going to look at is actually implementing these good HTML markup practices into our Rapid Weaver built website.